Back in the fall of 2019, right before the world would end, Apple released their latest and greatest smartphones, headlined by the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. These phones looked quite similar to the previous generation, but brought frosted glass for a more premium feel, and for the first time, had that square triple camera setup we've all become so familiar with in modern design. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I'm showing myself very briefly here, just because the iPhone 11 Pro is one of my favorite phones Apple's ever made. It's funny because it seems like one of those you could forget about pretty easily, but it was just such a big upgrade when I got it over the iPhone XS. The battery life was just unbelievable. I love the frosted glass and it really just is one of my favorite iPhones. It really is. So today, of course, we're going to be taking a look at it, how it holds up right now in 2022, how it'll hold up hopefully in the future, and whether or not you should maybe even consider buying it on the used market. Now to start this off, if you have an iPhone 11 Pro right now, congrats, you're good to go for years, frankly. It's still a fantastic phone. And the updates and the speed and all the good stuff, it's not going away anytime soon. And I don't think any of you would expect it to, but it's worth mentioning all the same. This is my own iPhone 11 Pro Max in midnight green, the one I bought back in 2019. I used it for the full year until the iPhone 12. It was a phone that I didn't expect much from, having been quite disappointed with the lack of change in the iPhone XS, but I was happily surprised. Actually, I was quite blown away by how much better this phone was. And while there was a number of reasons why, it all boiled down to one central improvement that really made me love this device. The battery life. Oh yes, the battery life. Timestamps are in the description below if you would like to skip ahead, but we are going to take a few minutes to discuss why I loved the iPhone 11 Pro, why it was a big deal, and we'll move into how it holds up today and look at the used market to see if it could even be worth buying for the right kind of person. But back to what I was saying, in years past, iPhones generally weren't known for strong batteries so the plus-sized iPhones were usually pretty good. But even with the iPhone X, the largest flaw was definitely the battery life, and unfortunately both the XS and even the much larger XS Max carried over this trait in 2018. But the iPhone 11 Pro managed to spin this around completely thanks to a couple key differences. The physical size of the phone got thicker and heavier, and then the A13 chipset. It was a thick boy, but like most, I was totally okay with this given the battery increases it came with. A move fairly unApple-like, but definitely a step in the right direction. Watching the event live, I remember my mind being blown. I'll never forget the moment that they said that the 11 Pro had four more hours of battery life than the XS, and the 11 Pro Max had five more hours than the XS Max. This to me is still one of the greatest moments in Apple event history, even if most people probably don't even remember it. You get four more hours of battery life. Four more hours. For me, the phone might just be worth buying just for that. This was a massive, massive increase, and one practically unheard of in a single generation leap. But again, thanks to the physically bigger size and optimization of the newer A13 chipset, Apple was able to make it happen. This is the first time ever I felt completely confident that my phone can handle a full day of heavy use without its battery needing charge. It was as good as they said, and that with the combination of the brand new amazing camera system made me fall in love with the phone pretty much as soon as I got it. And let's talk about that new camera system. As goofy looking as I thought it looked at the time. Here we had three camera lenses instead of two, the wide lens at 12 megapixels pixels, and then the telephoto 2 times zoom lens, also at 12 megapixels, and then there was that new ultra-wide at, again, 12 megapixels, with what is basically a 0.5 times zoom, so it gives you kind of a wider range, and all three of these combined makes for a lot more options when you're taking photos, depending on the situation. It was really nice to have. I was also glad at the time the more budget-oriented iPhone 11 got that new ultra-wide lens. I felt like it might be the more useful of them, as you can always zoom in digitally, but you can't zoom out, and so to see it on that phone was great, giving it that extra lens over the iPhone XR. And Apple, unlike the 11 Pro, is actually still selling the iPhone 11, which we'll get to a bit later. Link to my iPhone 11 review will be in the description below if you're interested. While the actual hardware of the cameras had of course been improved as they are pretty much every year, the biggest upgrade wasn't so much physical as it was on the software side, with the easiest thing to point to being night mode. For the first time, iPhones were able to take proper night mode photos. It was an actual feature, and there was an overall huge improvement to lower light situations in general. For an example on why this is such a big deal, on the left is a picture taken by the iPhone XS Max, on the right my iPhone 11 Pro Max, the 11 Pro having night mode on. It's literally a night and day difference. Now these are taken in a fairly extreme situation, mind you, very, very low light. So here's another photo in the same situation, but with the corner lamp on. And again, you can see that even though it's better lit, that 11 Pro does a much better job, even though it didn't actually go into night mode. Taking better photos in low light situations is a place where iPhone had really struggled in the past, 
and this was a huge help to the overall camera quality, along with it of course being fantastic in well-lit situations as well. Those 12 megapixels could produce some absolutely amazing photos. That regular wide lens was definitely the strongest, it gave the clearest, sharpest images, but again it's nice to have those other options, and it's not like they do a bad job, not by any means, they were great for the time, and they're still pretty good today. So this phone can absolutely take a great photo, particularly outdoors with good lighting, just like any other smartphone. Regular shots, portrait mode shots, you name it. Over the year I used my 11 Pro, I took lots of photos, and it's pretty easy to see why, it did a really good job. The selfie camera was also improved from the iPhone XS and XR, going to 12 megapixels from 7, and it offers a couple options on how you want to take a selfie. There's the more cropped in version, which is the default if you're holding it vertically, and then a wider angle, which is the default if you're holding it horizontally, and it takes advantage of the fold camera lens. Video is of course amazing on this camera, as you would expect. It can do 4K 60. Apple's been the best with video for a long, long time. I'm not sure exactly what Apple does that makes the video so good, but it is really good. So that's the camera already out of the way. Basically, the iPhone 11 Pro, fantastic camera in 2019, still very good camera in 2022. It can take a great shot, but of course, iPhones improve every year in this department, so going for a newer one will mean better photos. I believe my positive experience on the 11 Pro back in the day was helped by the all-new iOS 13, which for the first time brought a system-wide dark mode, which I found kind of completely breathed new life into the OS. It was an all-round great time to be jumping on the iPhone train, and Apple has been simply building on what they set forth with the 11 Pro ever since. It could be argued that both the 12 Pro and 13 Pro were more S-style upgrades over anything else from the original iPhone 11 Pro, changing the design somewhat, but otherwise just making continually basic improvements to the internals with the same general build and feature set. What are my impressions going to the 11 Pro Max from my 13 Pro? Well, it feels big. I haven't used a Max phone since the 11 Pro Max, so it's a bit of an adjustment. Of course, this was the last phone with the 6.5 inch display, rather than the 6.7 inches on the 12 Pro Max and 13 Pro Max. So the screen is actually a bit smaller than the current Max, though it's still very much big. The midnight green here was the new color, along with a more basic black, white, and gold as usual. And it was nice to see something so unique here. I really loved the midnight green, and it's awesome that Apple's basically brought it back now with the 13 Pro. You love to see it. Going to the 11 Pro, what am I even missing from the newest iPhones? Well, for one, the 120 hertz display. This was back in the days of 60 hertz, meaning content isn't as smooth as on the ProMotion displays, but it's something you likely wouldn't notice unless you're like me and are used to 120 hertz. The OLED screen here is absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't look much different from my current phone other than the refresh rate. New iPhones have gotten faster, but the A13 still provides a blazing fast speeds. We have four gigabytes of RAM here, which is totally enough. iOS is extremely well optimized, so it runs very quickly. There is no 5G networking here. That would come with the next year's iPhone 12. Not a big deal for me personally, as 5G in my area is pretty crappy anyways, but it could be a deal breaker if you want 5G. The notch here is a bit bigger than on my 13 Pro. It's the older notch, and it does feel generally less sleek, as it does have those rounded edges versus the flat sides that we've had since the iPhone 12. While I like the older design still, I do prefer the newer one. I've always loved the more square iPhone 4, iPhone 5 feel, but we do still use frosted glass. I'm really glad for this. I went with the non-pro last year with the iPhone 12, and I did miss the frosted glass. Of course, I usually use a case anyways, but for those times I wasn't using a case, the glossy just isn't as premium feeling, so really good move with the 11 Pro to bring that in. And the centered Apple logo, honestly, it's easy to forget that this was like a big deal at the time. This was completely new. Now it feels really natural and would feel weird without the centered Apple logo. And that square camera module, that was actually kind of controversial at first. People thought it looked funny, and I understand why, but what I find funny nowadays is how I thought it was huge back then, and, uh, well, comparing it to my 13 Pro, that's no longer so much the case. Yeah, the newer cameras are ridiculously big. It's actually almost comical how big they are, especially considering this is a smaller phone, but that's where we're at now. And there's way less of a camera wobble with the 11 Pro, thanks to the smaller camera bump, so that's kind of nice. And overall, this phone still gives a very premium feeling experience in 2022, and one not too far removed from the best Apple currently offers. It's fast, it's smooth, it runs the latest version of iOS and will continue to do so for many years. We've already talked about how the camera quality holds up pretty well, and of course I loved battery performance back in 2019, and it's been pretty good for me going back to it today. However, something I would keep in mind is that because this phone is approaching three years old, battery life might be starting to degrade and may not last as long as I've been insinuating here. You can check your battery health by going to settings, battery, battery health, and then that percentage there tells you how much of the original capacity is still usable. You might start having some issues once you're into the mid to low 80s, and once you're at 80% or lower, you might want to look into a battery replacement, as performance throttling or random shutdowns could start to become a common occurrence. Apple does 
does offer replacements for 70 American dollars, which is a decent deal to make your phone feel almost brand new again. But ultimately, the 11 Pro isn't brand new, and never again will be. Apple hasn't sold these since late 2020, and as such, you can't just go out to a store and buy one. You'll have no choice but to turn to the used market, whether it be an online marketplace like eBay, or a local one like Craigslist or Facebook. If we do go to ebay.com and look for the smaller 11 Pro, I was pretty happy to see that it wasn't too expensive. Keep in mind, not too long ago, this phone was a thousand dollars plus, and used or refurbished, I was seeing it for around four hundred dollars with sixty-four gigabytes of storage. The 11 Pro Max seems to be about an extra hundred on top of that, which is perfectly reasonable. And honestly, I gotta say, these are fairly decent deals for what is such a good phone, at least if you're someone who's comfortable with buying a smartphone off the used market. Now, buying used does have quite a few risks that come with it. Battery life could be bad, the seller could be lying about certain things, and so on and so forth. If you feel like you're up to the task of buying used, I do think with some diligence, you'll be able to find a good deal that suits you. But for those who prefer to buy brand new, for not much more, you can go to the iPhone 11, which Apple is still selling for $500 US. The iPhone 11 was again the cheaper option to the Pro and has the same chipset and cameras minus the telephoto lens. And it really is basically the same phone, but with a much lower quality LCD panel on the front versus that vibrant, gorgeous OLED one on the 11 Pro. Now I've made the 11 Pro's screen sound way better, but the thing is, if the screen isn't too important to you, if you've never really even thought about your smartphone screen, the 11's display is going to be more than good enough. It's just that the 11 Pro's is much higher quality and will appeal more to people who want a higher quality display. One bonus with the 11 though is that it's actually bigger than the smaller 11 Pro at 6.1 inches rather than 5.8 inches. This here is the iPhone 10 besides the iPhone 11. Consider the 10 a stand-in for the smaller 11 Pro. The newer Pro phones have the smallest option at 6.1 inches now, and I do find that to be about the sweet spot for myself, so that slightly bigger display, it doesn't seem like a huge deal, but you might find it a little bit more preferable. For the majority of people, I would recommend the normal iPhone 11, simply because you can buy it brand new. It sounds like a lot of money, $500, but if you're buying through a carrier, through your plan, whatever's going on there, there's a good chance you're not paying that up front, whereas on eBay, you do have to pay up front. But that being said, if you took the time to seek out this video because you specifically were interested in possibly purchasing the 11 Pro, even if buying brand new with the 11 is probably the best choice for most people, you taking that step to look specifically into a phone probably means you're not in the category of most people. And so I will say the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max both seem like solid options at around $400 to $500 or even less, ideally, if you can find a deal. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't officially recommend buying used. It's just a general rule of mine nowadays. There's too many problems that can come with that. And, you know, I don't want people to be blaming me for it if that comes up. But from what I've seen here, they do seem like decent options if that's something you want to do. This is a really great phone, one I've always loved and one that still really holds up. Pretty much everything about this phone is still solid, which you would expect from a phone that is about two and a half years old, but also used to cost a thousand dollars. This video, I've spent a little less time on specs and numbers versus how I usually do these reviews. Hopefully that's all right, because I do feel like the experience is really what matters the most when it comes to phones like these. If you own an iPhone 11 Pro right now or have in the past, definitely leave a comment below letting me know what you think of all this. Very curious. I don't tend to answer comments too much nowadays, but I read them probably a lot more than is healthy for my mental well-being, so I can't wait to hear what people have to say. And with that, I think I'm right about done here. If you found the video interesting or helpful, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech and also TikTok, I always forget. And uh, we do have a Discord if you would like to come by and talk some tech. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time. Thank you